Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we will be exploring pattern brushes in Adobe Illustrator. And pattern brushes can be a lot of fun. They can allow me to take this simple rectangular shape here and with one click, transform it into a very interesting frame for some type. Or I could take this simple ellipse here and apply my brush, the brush we're going to be making. And you'll see right now that doesn't look like much because it has no beginning and no end. But if I go into my stroke panel, show options, and create a dashed line, uh, it becomes a lot more interesting. And I can control the thickness or the size of the pencils uh, in my stroke panel here, either up here or down here in the stroke panel. I can make them smaller or I can make I'm quite fat, and uh, it's entirely up to me. Uh, so this is really uh, a fun thing to do, and it can be a big time saver if you're going to use this kind of motif repeatedly. So let's go down and see how I built this brush. Uh, I started with uh, an illustration I did for a client for some art supply packaging a few years ago of this pencil. And uh, if we look at it outline view, you'll just see it's a simple vector illustration. And what I need to do to create my brush is create a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you can basically create a pattern brush with anything that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is with the Pathfinder. And I'll show you how. First thing I do is I select my pencil. Since there are a lot of compound shapes, I'm going to group it. And then I've made this little trim shape. It's just a plain rectangle. And I'm just going to put it over my pencil here, holding down my Shift and Option key. I'm going to move it out here and to here. So this is blocking out what I'm going to need. Select everything and choose Pathfinder. And here in the Pathfinder, I'm going to use Trim. One click. Doesn't look like much has happened, but a lot has happened. Ungroup, click off, and now what Pathfinder has done for me it separated my shapes out quite neatly. So I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, I did a few calculations in advance to make sure that um, this was a square. That's not absolutely essential, but if I decide to make corners, it could be later. And if I want to check that, I can go to transform here and I can double check that the width and the height of that are the same. And they are. So that's good. When creating a pattern brush, always start with the central shape. I'm going to select that and group it. And with that selected, go to my panel menu in my brushes panel, and I choose new brush. And I want this to be a pattern brush. OK. I'm going to call it Pencils 2 because I already created a pencil brush. Uh, earlier to demonstrate to you. So this looks pretty good and these little diagrams show me uh, what's going on here and I notice this is my center you can kind of see that there and Illustrator has gone ahead and created a corner for me and you see that right here and uh, it created an auto sliced corner and that actually looks pretty good to me. I could create my own corner artwork and put it in here but today I'm just going to be happy with what Illustrator did. And now on this bottom corner here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose Auto Slice again. And notice it creates another corner for me. And that's pretty cool. Now this is going to be my end. And this is going to be my beginning. So I'm going to click OK there. And I see my new brush has appeared in my brush panel here. I'm going to select my start or my beginning 
group it. And now I can just drag this in, holding down my Option key right here. And notice that starts uh, my thing. The, the preview looks a little funky here. It looks like the size is wrong, but don't worry. That's going to be OK. Click OK. That looks pretty good. I'm going to select the tip of my pencil or my end, group it, and just drag it in. Oops, forgot to hold down my Option key. Hold down the Option key or your Alt key if you're on a PC and drag it in there. And that's just perfect. As I said, don't worry about the, um, the change in scale there. It's going to be fine. And I'm going to click OK. And that looks great. So let's go ahead and test this out. So I'll return these to standard appearance here. Open up our, um, get rid of the, the dashed line, and now we're going to choose that. And you'll notice there's a break here, which is what allows my start and my finish to show. That looks good. And once again, in the stroke panel, I can control the weight of the stroke, the size of the pencil. And obviously, some things are going to work better than others. And you'll have to be the judge of what works best. Let's apply our, our brush to just this unbroken ellipse here. As before, it doesn't look like much. And we explored using a dashed line previously. But um, if I choose my Add Anchor Point tool, I can cut a little piece out of this ellipse. And instantly, my start and my finish go ahead and show. So that looks pretty great. Uh, I'm just going to show you one other possibility. I pre-created, I'm just going to turn this off and turn this layer on. And um, you can see here that I, let me make that uh, black and make it a little thicker so you can kind of see what I've done here. I created some plain skeleton letters here. And this isn't a typeface. These are just little vector drawings that I created. If I select them and go to brushes here, and choose brushes. All of a sudden, I've got kind of an interesting custom headline going on here. It looks a little too thick, so maybe if I thin it down a little bit, and I might have to lengthen or shorten some of the strokes to make them look just the way I want. Uh, but I think that's kind of a cool little thing. Pattern brushes are a lot of fun, and you can create them from many different kinds of illustrations. Uh, in my next video, I'll be showing you how to create uh, pattern brushes from this spoon and this fork icon. And you can kind of see how that works here. One point is too big. Cut it down to a half a point. There's my fork. And there's my spoon. Once again, down to a half. So pattern brushes can be put to all kinds of uses, and we'll do one more video on them before we start exploring some of the other ways of making brushes in Adobe Illustrator. So thank you for watching.